thing about self-discipline is that it is necessary for everything you do in your life. You have to be self-disciplined. If discipline comes from somewhere else, uh, it's very, very hard to remain consistent because you tend to resist. It's wild because I see trainers and they're in the gym with people and, you know, the guy or girl that they're working out hates their workout, hates it because the discipline is coming from somewhere else. You, it's something that you dread every time you go in. You don't really want to do it. It's like, uh, but oh no, my trainer's here. He's about to, you know, beat me up and make me feel crazy. Well, the truth is, every trainer should work his way out of your life. Anybody who's working you out, your teachers, your trainers, your people, they have to train you to get out of your life. So you can go ahead, do your own workout, do your own thing, practice self-discipline. Now, one thing I want to straighten out, big time. Discipline is not punishment. It's not. Discipline is training. That's all it is. I was talking to my son one time and I asked him, and it was weird because I was trying to see if he really knew what it was all about. And I said, hey man, you know I have to discipline you. What is discipline? And he goes, punishment, punishment. When I do something wrong and you punish me. I was like, no, no. Discipline is training. If you change your mind, your mindset, and really focus it on what discipline really is, you start to welcome discipline. You welcome self-discipline into your life. Let me start with the number one key to self-discipline. Remove temptation. You must remove temptation if you are going to have self-discipline. I'm trying to say, if you are trying to lose weight, if you are trying to get better, if you are trying to do things in a good, good way, you have to remove the temptations. Me, I had a problem with pornography years ago. And now, it's one of those things that I had to eliminate temptations. I had to eliminate things that I felt would, would trigger me and get me back going on the wrong path. And it's really, really subtle. One of the things is by examining what the way you think and how you act, in a given situation, um, I find that there were times like Friday night is when I felt like that was the time to view pornography. You know why? Because I remember everyone going out on Friday and it feeling real sexy and feeling like woo and women and this and dancing and partying and all that. And then I would, I would do it. I'd say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm a good boy, but I'm going to stay home and I'm going to watch porn, which was a horrible, horrible habit. So Friday night, I know when those feelings are coming and when that I get sensitive and I feel like, hmm, you know, this might be the time to click on something, you know what I mean? And I know it and I head it off at the path. You just make sure that you know where you are and you avoid those temptations. Same thing with eating. If you know you have a problem with donuts, do not go to the donuts shop to get your coffee. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go to a place that doesn't have donuts or something that you know is your vice, that you know you shouldn't do. Uh, another thing you can be proactive when I say avoiding temptation, if you want to really consistently make the gym a part of your life, set your clothes out for the gym the night before and it will remove the temptation to not go to the gym when you wake up you all of a sudden you have your clothes there and you just hop in them instead of looking all over the house I can't find my shirt I can't find my socks I don't know what's going on you'll have your clothes there and there will be no excuse for you not to go avoiding temptation is a way of life by doing one thing differently you can avoid all kind of temptation and it is the key to your self-discipline now let's talk about the next key Number two is to eat regularly and healthily. You know, in therapy, there was a call, there was a, a phrase that we used to use all the time called HALT, H-A-L-T. And that means when you are hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, you have to be really, really conscious of what's happening. It's called HALT. Anytime you're hungry, angry, lonely, tired, HALT. Look at what you're doing. Examine it. If you're hungry, get something to eat. If you're angry, 
calm down. Think about where you are. Get yourself in a good mood. If you are lonely, call a friend. Call someone you know. Talk about your thing. Talk about your emotions. Talk about how you're feeling. And if you are tired, get some rest because that is when you're weakened. All of those four states of being is when you are at your weakest spot. And it's very, very, very hard to keep self-discipline when you're weak. It is. You know what I mean? You are a fallible human being. So you have to know, halt, and you will find the key to self-discipline.